Great to see you again. Welcome. Nice podium. Nice to see you. Well, you know, we, we, we're glad that our friends at City were able to make this possible to happen today. I, I appreciate it. So the main thing I've been curious to ask you about is how you're still at 90 percent occupancy in the building. Uh, so walk us through the details of that, if you could. So actually, it's across our portfolio and the real difference is outperformance in 2022. Uh, we increased our leased percentage by 260 basis points and our occupancy percentage by 210 basis points. And that's a combination of the right buildings and the right locations. We're leaders in energy efficiency. We're leaders in sustainability, healthy buildings, indoor environmental quality. Our locations are excellent. Our leverage is low. And we're, 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 we offer uh, uh, well modernized buildings with amenities and at a price point that tenants really want. And that's been a terrific result for us at, for 22. And we're off to a nice start in 23. Yeah, and obviously, you know, the main benefit or, or one of the main benefits is to have the observatory, you know, to basically have a tourist destination as an If every office building had a tourist destination, people might not be so worried. That said, you do have 18 percent of your exposure to technology, media and advertising. Do you worry a little bit with major tenants? You know, you've got LinkedIn, for example. I don't know if if they will be subject to further layoffs and maybe some cost cutting pressures. Well, you know, LinkedIn started with us as a 3,500 square foot subtenant uh, many, many years ago. They are now over 600,000 square feet in our portfolio, uh, located at the Empire State Building. Uh, they're terrific partners with us. Of course, we have Microsoft owns LinkedIn, so that's our credit on the on, on the lease. And uh, they've continued to expand, and they have rights to expand in the future. Uh, and New York is a terrific place to hire the engineers and the people who tech tenants want to have. And it's a much better quality of life uh, than, than is available in San Francisco. So we feel pretty strong about that in our, in our considerations of what we've got. We have over 2.5 million square feet of new leases signed since we went public in 2013 which are expansions of existing tenants. And that also speaks to the fact that we choose the right tenants who want to expand with us and mm -hmm. can afford to do so and who are attracted to the offering we have. And I should again emphasize this point about the balance sheet because you could do all of those things right, but if you had a lot of debt coming due at higher rates, it would still be an issue and analysts are giving you credit for not having that. I want to just back up for a second though, uh, Anthony, if I may, and whether it's Vornado, whether it's you, whether it's some of these other REITs, the peak stock prices were back in 2015 and 2016. Why is that? Well, I, I can tell you this much. Look, we came out public at uh, 13. Uh, we are where we are now. I think that there has been a general move, move away from publicly traded uh, REIT stocks mm -hmm. into the perceived safety of privately traded REITs or just private funds. And the interesting thing is that there's this big disconnect between the appraisals on the private holdings and the market. I think that the market is probably more accurate than the privates. And as money shifts back into the, the public markets, uh, the, the discounts will, de will decrease. Very. And it's the same argument. And people say, you know, if you're in a bond fund, you know, you could be down 30 percent. And they say, well, the bonds you're holding are also worth less. Than <laughs> you just don't know it. Are you comf right. confident then you're going to be able to ride this out for the next couple of years and not uh, be concerned about increasing defaults or delayed payments in the office space? Well, look, we're in good shape with our tenants. Uh, my background before I started out in the real estate business was in private equity uh, on the on the corporate side, not real estate. So we're very focused on credit quality. STV, who just signed with us for 65,000 square feet at the Empire State Building, moving from what used to be a super hot area, Park Avenue South, uh, that's owned by a very wealthy uh, industrial Amer uh, American family hmm. and has a lot of money behind it. We feel that we, uh, we, we've chosen the right tenants. We've chosen tenants who want to be where we are. And we've got a different price point that makes us far more competitive for what we offer than really anybody else.